Hey everyone, my name is Simsy. How you all doing? Welcome back to some more Hearts of Iron 4 Cold War mod. Here today on the channel, we're back with episode 2 of my United States campaign. It's July 1952. We're currently under the Truman administration. We've got two wars up and running. Vietnam conflict. And unfortunately, Korea looks like it's potentially about to fall. US forces are heading over. But it's going to take some time before they arrive. The French are holding for us. No US lives have been lost just yet. But uh, the Koreans are battling at uh, Busan. We're currently trying to expand our air force, air force capacity. As we kind of got smashed in the peninsula. Well, mostly due to the... Soviet fighter pilots in those Susan MiGs over Pyongyang. But oh, oh, okay. We've had an election. We have a new administration now. Dwight Eisenhower is now the new US president in 52. Not going to lie, Truman was kind of throwing a little bit in Korea, but now with big old Dwight back in the big seat, hopefully uh, he can steer the ship in Korea. As there's been a bit of a counter-offensive here in the south, the DPR really on the back foot, and he's currently commissioning... Naval helicopters. Alright. Looks like the Koreans. With the help of essentially NATO land lease. They might be able to retake Seoul. Two million. That is a terrible terrible loss attrition rate settings there on the defense but have had a couple of counter punches okay looks like we've changed up our army and more or less uh, streamlined it somewhat 32 infantry roughly 20 tanks compared to the various other light infantry and helicopters and stuff we have. Alright. So Dwight officially hasn't put any boots on the ground in Nam just yet. They will eventually come. The French battling somewhat. A uh, couple developments in the common turn in the last episode, of course. Turkey and Greece joined the common turn, which is concerning. Oh no! What's this? <gasps> uh oh. Um. Are we going to get involved? You would imagine we're on the side of the people's... Oh, maybe not. So, hang on a minute. We have the option to invite them. But that could bring the World War in 1953. Oh, no. Stalin um, died. And that's what's caused it. The new council is reckless. I guess they're threading nuclear war, okay. Looks like Poland's about to fall anyway. You would imagine they would have a pact with them. So Poland, wanting to tear up the Warsaw Pact. Firmly under the Iron Curtain. Was like enough is enough. But thanks to the boys in East Berlin, it's gonna fall. 
Okay. So I wonder if we reunify Germany, they're going to have slightly more. But that's not good. Poland was puppeted, so... And... A... Marxist regimes we put in charge. Okay, technically they're not a part of the Comintern, but... They're puppeted of the USSR. So they have even less... Even less technically regional autonomy compared to Hungary, Yugoslavia, hell, even East Germany. Alright, so, looks like there's been a, a stalemate, an armistice in Korea, and we're still guaranteeing the south, they're guaranteeing the north, but Jeez, after fierce fighting, with two million in the south lost, somehow, neither side control the entirety of the Korean Peninsula. In July 1953, still a lot more proxy wars and uh, efforts to come, you'd imagine. Okay, so what's happened here in the Congo? Although, France still has a lot of overseas colonies, there might be potentially proxy wars there. As you would imagine, the USSR will want to do like it did historically. Spread and invest and, and help influence sub-Saharan Africa. Eisenhower is expanding the nuclear aircraft capabilities. Winston's still in charge of the UK. I don't know historically too much about some of the other leaders, but... Okay. What's the Central Intelligence Agency doing? The CIA doing CIA things? Okay, upgrading the engineer capacity. As if they attack Poland, man. <laughs> Nearly starting World War Three in 1953. All right. October 1954, nothing overly crazy or has changed, except we're at an arm somehow. We never actually landed. North and South came to an agreement, so I imagine tensions will flare up again. The French actually left. Same with Korea as well, so still plenty more historical events to come, national focus wise. The French Republic is currently battling it out with the Algerians, Winston's still in charge. Austria is now a reunited country. And... The USSR is struggling without Stalin. Eisenhower is going to try and back the French and get some better ties with them. As they're technically not in NATO. They're in their own faction. He's going to send a proposal. So maybe... Things will reignite in Nam once again. As the French have now left, and there's a firm north and south divide. And, oh. He doesn't look very Thai. <laughs> Siam has a uh, new prime minister. Hello, I'm George Takei. <laughs> 
president of Thailand. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Looks like Eisenhower is expanding his portfolio and theatres with uh, opening up the Syrian desk. So no other wars are going on at the moment that we're involved in. Okay, increase Eastern European coverage. Okay, hopefully we might be able to turn some of those states in the Iron Curtain towards freedom, liberty, democracy, and American thinking. God damn it. Okay. MK Ultra. Yeah, all right. Let's say uh, to start that plan. I hope. Yeah, no nothing's gonna come bad of that. All right. The M56 Scorpion's being researched. Can't wait to check out that bad boy. We're also going to get better quality grenades. Granadas and claymores and stuff. Uh, this war is perpetually bugged for some reason, so let's just forget about that one. Yeah, so the French pulled out an arm and if I imagine realistically focusing on their former North African colonial country in uh, Algeria. But we're doing alright, even with some small pockets of resistance in the far mountains. We're expanding our de destroyer capacity somewhat. And we still have battle plans to navally invade East Germany and the Balkans from the US mainland, <laughs> if we need to. Oh, okay. 1956 now. Skipping a little bit ahead. December. Oh, wow. I have no idea who this guy is. So we have a new president of the states. Okay, so I think we've deviated slightly. As things have quietened off a little bit with the French withdrawal. Nothing's really been going on in Korea or Nam. Maybe this new administration might spice things up. Establishing NASA. Who was in the 1957? Wasn't it wasn't Reagan, was it? It's coming close. The Democrats won though in 57. Or maybe maybe um Eisenhower got toppled. Alright, just quickly looking down in Central America just to see if anything changes in our backyard. But we've still got a lot to look forward to in this campaign. The wait, there's a new head of the USSR. Okay, I don't think he was... That's not Gorbachev or Khrushchev. <laughs> okay, so two unseen controllers of the US and uh, the USSR. Hopefully that, uh, that spices this thing up, I suppose. Okay, so we're going to increase shipments to Turkey and Iran. Interesting. Maybe we can try and flip Turkey and, and pull them away from the USSR and the Kremlin supervisors. But unfortunately, there's a um, socialist government in charge. Abandon the Syrian schemes. Okay. So Iraq is currently puppeting Jordan, which is interesting. Okay, it looks like he's tearing up Eisenhower's plans that were there. Interesting.
Okay, so... The conflict has flared up in Pakistan. And Afghanistan, okay. So we're gonna back the south, or the Soviets are gonna back the north, interesting. So it looks like a, another proxy conflict has emerged. We'll try and get involved in this one. Just need to watch out for their commitment. So what, 1958? The Korean War has ended. We're coming up towards the Missile Crisis and the Berlin War now. As we're actually firmly at war with Afghanistan, so this could spark things off. Let's hope not. Because I don't think we're ready just yet for a full-blown conflict. There's still plenty more proxy fights. Plenty more civil wars that we can help out. But so far, pa so far Pakistan is pushing them quite well. If we, if we could get them to control Afghanistan, that would be decent for us. Okay, so it looks like a pocket has ceded. So what do we got here? Tibet. The problem is China could get involved technically. Alright, still got forces defending the US mainland. Hey, Turkey uh, left the USSR. Interesting. Although it's still the Socialist Republic of Turkey. Maybe. Just maybe. We might get them to join NATO. Those arm shipments and steady supplies seem to have worked. Okay, so it doesn't look like um, the Kremlin is backing the Afghanis. This is pretty early anyway. For like what? The Soviet Afghan war was 79 to 90s? Yes. It was throughout the 80s. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. What's this? <gasps> Apart from that Morocco fight, India's just got involved. Oh no. I guess it's their backyard. Are we officially at war with India? Oh, you've gotta be kidding me. So there's a Moroccan civil war, that's understanding. Oh no! <laughs> um, that's kind of huge. They're social democrat as well. Okay, things are really starting to hop up here. Well, after the decolonization from the UK and becoming a free and independent country throwing away the old British Raj. India is now at war with the states. Okay, so Pakistan Af declared war against Afghanistan. And they're starting to win. And then they saw Pakistan nearly like conquer all of Afghanistan. So India got involved. So we have an opportunity here to puppet, subjugate, conquer the Indian subcontinent ironically I say irony it's ironic I bring up the irony and it's ironic because we kind of got the British realm to sort of you know uh, decolonize their colonial possessions <laughs> but hey we're going to be able to build our own American empire oh wow so under this new administration, oh okay, so Pakistan actually was annexed, they actually lost, but we're still fighting, 
We're, the Soviets haven't even helped. Oh, they haven't done anything. Or maybe they're secretly funding the Indians, potentially. They do have, even to this day, a strong alliance with the Kremlin. So then we've got this Moroccan civil war going on. Alright, well I guess we're going to have to try and take and partition India and the, the US are going to go and save the Afghanis. The, uh, the brave Mujahideen boys. Let's uh, go and help them, arm them, and uh, hopefully nothing will uh, happen with that, I suppose. Anyway, unfortunately on that note, it's time to wrap things up here. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed episode 2 of the United States Cold War series. Stay tuned for episode 3 coming out soon, where we've got a huge task ahead of us with a new president, who I don't even know who he is, never seen him before, is dealing with the Indian crisis. We're at war with India. What? We're at war with the Indians? Wrong Indians. <laughs> okay. Um, this is going to be quite hard, because India's got a huge population, probably militarily supported by the Soviets in their equipment and logistics, but hopefully we can out-tech them and uh, conquer India and then eventually bring them into NATO. Alright guys, got to wrap things up here. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more from me, check out the videos on screen. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.